Hello and welcome back to my channel and in this video I am painting a webbed up Frodo from the Lord of the Rings or rather the Middle Earth fantasy strategy battle game from Games Workshop. So this is a little metal figure of Frodo that's all webbed up. He's been caught by Shelob and maybe in another video I'll paint Shelob as well. So I'm going to start off with the flesh tone as always with the Kislev flesh. Nice light flesh tone on this one. And then we're just going to go straight in with the wash with the army painter flesh tone as well. I mean, you can use a Reichland flesh aid if you prefer. Um, it's all about personal preference with the videos. Uh, I, as you know, I enjoy using the army painter washes. But if you prefer using the Citadel, then that's completely up to you. It's your own personal choice. So I'll just cover over the skin bits with his little feet poking out of the web here and his face. And of course, once they dry back up, then we're going to build the colours and the tones back up into something else. So once that's dry we're going to move back onto the Kislev Flesh. We're just going to paint onto the uh, raised areas of the face, so just around the, uh, the nose, the cheeks, uh, up on the forehead, down around the chin and things like that. Just trying to leave the shade sit in the area around between the face and the web, just to create that element of depth there. And we're going to do, like I say, just around the cheeks and things like that as well. I'm going to be extra careful with this. This is a uh, very small area to try to get to do some details with. Um, so if you do have a set of magnifying glasses, uh, this would be a perfect time to use them. So I'm just going across the toes as well, like so. There we go, so once we've done that, I'm going to use the Kislev Flash again. But this time I'm going to use a bit of a mixture, so we're going to mix in Flayed Bone Flash as well, so this will create a highlight layer. Um, and for this I'm using about a 50-50 mix, just, just enough of both to create a, a highlight without it looking too over the top. And for this, that's all I'm doing is just catching the cheeks and the forehead and the chin. So this time I'm not painting the whole face or anything like that, I'm just painting to the areas where I think the highlights would be. So we're just catching those areas, like I say, the cheekbones and things like that. And once I've highlighted the face, and then going on and doing the base. Um, for me, I've already glued him to the base and I've already put a, a, a quite a lot of like sort of um, stonework and dirt and, and things like that around this base. So I'm painting this with a heavy charcoal and I'm going to paint this to make it look like really dark, sort of run um, really dark rocks so that it tries to simulate sort of Shelob's layer from the movies because in the movies she's got a really sort of dark rocky area just as the guys um, Sam and Frodo are sort of ascending the stairs um, she's uh, sort of in this area where everything's quite dark and dingy and black and things like that so we're starting with heavy charcoal because this is a very dark grey that then should um, allow us to highlight and create a, a nice element of depth on that, that base. Also, because Frodo is in a web, when we paint the web, him being in a lighter colour on the darker colour should create a really nice contrast. So talking about that lighter colour, we're going to move on to doing the webbing. And when I'm painting the webbing, I'm painting this with a flayed one flesh. So I'm trying to create a creamy texture to the webbing. So it's not going to be bright white or anything like that. This is more of a cream colour. And again, this is all about trying to create that contrast. Because when you look at the difference between the cream versus that harsh dark charcoal, that gives us a really nice contrast. So the Frodo miniature and Frodo being webbed up stands out so much on that background, stands out so much off that base um, that it really looks the part it really looks amazing and so it should give you that extreme um, differences of the contrast one thing I would say though is to just be careful when you're painting the webbing going around the face because you don't want to get your highlighted color across the face as well I'm just painting the hair because Frodo has a, a little bit of a darker brown hair so what I'm doing is I'm just painting the uh, the little fringe that's poking out here is little hair in a dryad bark from Citadel. And then once that's dry, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to um, put a dark tone from the army painter across the hole. 
miniature. The only part that I'm missing out with this now is the face. So I'm going to cover the webbing and I'm going to cover the base itself. Uh, but I'm not going to do the face and his feet because the skin tones and everything is done. But what you can see now by using this wash, you can see where it's picking out all of those details on the webbing. And you can really start to see where all the individual strands of the webbing are and things like that. It's starting to look really good. Now we're going to highlight that again anyway, so don't worry if it looks a little bit too dark when you're painting this. Um, I'm using a dark tone, but you don't have to. Again, about personal choice, if you'd prefer, you can use a Citadel, you can use a Null Noil if you like, or anything like that. Um, you know, it's all about personal choice. This is just me painting and showing you sort of the effects that I've got to get to this stage. And then if you want to follow or if you want to uh, paint similarly, then it's completely up to you. So there we go, just covering the whole thing. Again, just trying to be careful around the head, around the, uh, the webbing, around his face and things like that. It does get a little bit um, tough just around by the cheeks here and just under his chin as well. So there we go, just trying to keep as safe and as careful as possible. So from there I'm just going to dry brush a little highlight. So the first highlight step that I'm doing is from a Vallejo Blue Grey Pale. Um, again, if you want to use a Citadel, a Dawnstone would be great. And I'm just using a light uh, dry brush across. Now the base was made using um, a little bit of stone, um, so actual natural stones. But it was also made with uh, cork as well. So it was made with a few strips of cork as well to create a, a little bit of sort of a an outcrop or anything where, where Frodo lays. If you'd like to know how I've made sort of a, a cork base like that, then I have got a quick short video on my channel as well about how to do sort of tarmac and things, and the principle's exactly the same. So after that, we're going to use another highlight, and we're just going to use a Vallejo Sky Grey. So this one is a very light grey, so because of that, I'm just going to catch the very edges with this one. As you can see, I'm just being a lot more careful, not running this colour over the whole thing. I'm just actually using this colour across the very, very edges just to, again, create that little bit more uh, depth, create that little bit more of an element of depth from it. And I'm going to do the same thing with the web in. So I'm going to move on and use that uh, Flay Dome Flesh again from Citadel. And I'm just going to dry brush this. And as you'll see, I'm trying to dry brush my, uh, trying to keep my brush in straight lines. So I'm just going to up and down the miniature. Because of the way that the webbing actually covers across the body, um, I'm using this up and down the miniature so that it catches the webbing and it catches the raised areas, leaving that darker area underneath. And from there, I'm just going to do the same thing. So just using a highlight now so I'm just going to dry brush that down again so this is a Vallejo Bone White and this is a, a, a sort of cream, uh, creamier highlight to your um, Flayed One Flesh. So this is more of a, a, a whitey cream so this is more of a, a lighter colour. And this one's just going on top just to highlight again a little bit more. Oh, we're not done there. So the way I've been to create a little bit more colour because we don't want it to just be black and white and, and cream and things like that. I'm actually using a light tone from Army Paint. And now, a light tone is more like a Seraphim Sepia. So this is more of a sepia tone or a sepia sort of wash. And this one, the reason why I'm putting this one on top again after just highlighting is because we've got the darker bits and we've got the blacks there. But um, I just wanted to try to create a little bit more colour depth to that shading as well. Now light tone is quite um, gentle, it's quite soft, but it does create sort of a nice sort of sepia colour. So I did want to kind of get a bit more colour out of it. I wasn't fussed on keeping the web in just like a black with a, a, a cream highlight. We wanted a bit of colour and a bit of life into the, uh, into the miniature as well. So that's the reasoning behind going back and washing on top of a wash. The good thing by putting the black, the really dark tone underneath is that it does still um, show uh, an element of depth, so it does still show that really dark parts in patches, so in the really darker recess points, in the really darkest areas, you do still get that 
um, that dark shade in. And I'm just going to catch his shade, uh, catch his fringe a little bit now, just using a little bit of um, flat earth here, just to create a little bit more of a lighter brown. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to get a little bit. Um, we're going to get a little bit brave and what we're going to do is we're going to paint some of the most prominent webs by hand so instead of dry brushing this layer what we're going to do is we're just going to use very thin coats of bone white um, and i'm just going to paint these by hand because there's certain ones there that you want to stand out as if they are like the newest or the most uh, recent or the ones um uh, the webbing that's sitting on the top of the miniature or on the top of the web so you've got some that are stuck inside the uh, the sort of ball that Shelob has wrapped Frodo in you kind of want to leave those in a bit of a shaded area while at the same time then highlighting the ones that are on the very top so that it gives you that that depth it's worth taking your time and doing this as a as a as a stage because dry brushing is good but it can be messy so whereas we've highlighted to then put this color on now instead of highlighting and dry brushing and being messy we're going to really take our time and really pick out these specific ones and it'll make the miniature pop because again when you look at this on your display or on the table it's really going to stand out with the amount of effort that you've put into painting certain um, in certain strands of the webbing and things like that it's really going to make a difference so take your time enjoy this stage can be quite fiddly as you can see i'm just using the very 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 tip of my brush i've got a thin layer so it doesn't affect the uh, the, the model too much and i'm just going to then do a couple of coats of that now we're going to get a little bit creative with this stage and what we're going to do is we're going to try and do something uh, that i've never done before so i'm using a uhu glue um, and from what I can gather, this is supposed to be quite simple and quite easy. Now I'm going to use a broken and dead brush. And I'm going to mix the flayed one flesh that we used for the original base colour of the, um, the webbing. And the reason for that is I'm going to try to create webbing out of the glue. It's very, very messy. So if you are using this stuff, you will notice just how messy it is. Um, it's very sticky as well. So this glue is amazing because you can mix this with a colour. And then once you've mixed it with the colour, this glue then reacts like the glue, almost like a putty. And then it'll dry like a putty as well, like a really hard putty. So you can use this to make things like blood, gore, all these different things. But what I'm going to try and do is try to make this to uh, try to use this to make webbing, so that Frodo then isn't just encased in webbing. It should have him stuck to the floor because of the webbing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to place a blob and then just drag the webbing across and then place another blob like so. I'm just going to press that down as well just to make sure that it's stuck there properly. I'm just going to pick up another chunk here. This stuff is very easy to use. It's amazing stuff. It's really fun to use. I think I put a bit too much on my brush there, so we'll come back to that now. It's very easy to use because once you mix it with the paint, like I say, it acts like a putty and it's so easy to drag around. And you can see just how quickly and easily it can create an amazing, amazing sort of webbing or like I say, if you mix this with blood or anything like that, it's really fun to play about with. It's um, It creates a completely unique and um, individual type of, of effect like I mean that's a cool looking effect on Frodo there he actually looks like he's been glued or webbed straight into that little alcove so not only has he been webbed up all across his body he's also been webbed down as well so what I'm gonna do now just to tie that web in that we've just placed just to tie the glue in I'm just going to paint this over with a very light uh, dead white. Dead white is an off white, so it's not straight directly a really bright white. And what I'm going to do is, um, those those highlighted bits that we painted earlier, I'm just going to paint some of those and the glued web that we've got going across. And the reason for that is, it's just to tie the colours together. I didn't want the, uh, the, the webbing on top to be made out of that flayed one flesh. 
while the webbing across his body was highlighted and looking sort of creamy. So the idea for this is using a very thin coat of this is that it should tie those colours together. Um, and that's pretty much all I'm doing here is I'm just tying those colours together by painting across the, the, the beams. And once he's done, it is as simple as that. It should look as good as that. And I mean, that's a really cool effect. It's great, great for putting on your shelves, for you to keep as a display model. And he's a really fun little model to paint as well. It can be a little fiddly, but like I say, take your time, really enjoy it. And as always, thank you very, very much for watching and for all of your support.